Kaya ako lang ng oras. At dahil nga sobrang trabaho ninyo, kaya halos wala ng panahon. And mabuti naman, no? And they decided na magkaroon ng ganito. Now, marami yung mga katanungan ng mga tao, pati media, at isa sa kanila ay yung mga kritiko yung lalo po ninyo. Sinasabi nilang, bakit naman itong administrasyon na ito eh, nakapokus yata upang isilence yung mga kritiko instead na yung mga mas malagang bagay ang asikasuhin. Ano po bang masasabi natin dito? You're more, you're focusing the more on the silencing your critics. I have yet to hear I have yet to sign anything ordering the arrest or the silencing of anybody in this government, especially the critics. The fact that they are doing it every day only goes to show that uh, I am giving them the, the time of their lives to just talk and talk and talk. Wala naman. It's an invented uh, uh, phrase kasi yung silencing. Eh, pati yung kay Dilima, the entire country knows that. He has a pending case, no bail, is being detained, and everywhere I go, it seems to be that they were able to left were able to uh, place the news in, in, in a wrong perspective that Dilima is being uh, detained and she is a prisoner of conscience. But of course, in the Filipino, to us Filipinos, that's, uh, that's crazy because uh, it's in court, it's being heard, and uh, she had had a uh, uh, here days of uh, explaining it to the public. Aside from that, wala na. Yun naman kay Trillanes, there are just only two of them. Uh, may nakita kasi si uh, Soljen Kalida na mali. Uh, pagka mali, mali is mali. Hindi mo talaga makorek yan. And one of the glaring mistakes of uh, the Aquino administration was to extend uh, an amnesty. But the procedure was uh, totally wrong in the sense that uh, he just issued the proclamation, no particular names. It was a motherhood statement to cover the individual and any of the acts of the mutineers. Ang problema niyan, uh, he designated Gasmin to investigate and there was a committee. And that committee came up with the resolution uh, to grant amnesty. On that basis, Gasmin wrote to the president that they are recommending amnesty. Correct. Walang problema yan. The problem is after recommending, at the end of the narration, the narratives there, Gasmin signed the amnesty itself. You know, it is not possible to do that. Why? Because an act of pardon or amnesty is an act of state. It cannot be delegated to anybody but to the person of the <coughs> president himself. It's not a circular that is being followed by the secretaries or a procedure prescribed by the office of the president. That ain't the case. Yung Presidente mismo, in the Constitution, exclusively grants him the power to pardon and amnesty. Look, why? You know, because the action now taken against him by way of a criminal complaint is a very serious one, rebellion. Had it succeeded, it could have overthrown the government. So that an act of pardon, an act of amnesty, is always an act of state, which cannot be done by a mere cabinet member. Especially if that cabinet member was the one mm. or was one mm. of those who investigated and made the recommendation and approved the recommendation himself. In other words, Mr. President, they're saying that 
the power to grant amnesty and pardon it's is personal as well exclusive. as exclusive to the president. Yes, correct. It's an act of state. Just like the power to grant to suspend the privilege of the writ of habeas yeah. corpus and to declare martial yes. law. Yes, and to, to call uh, Congress a special session. You cannot delegate it to the executive secretary. In fact, you're, uh, Mr. President, your doctrine, you know, the doctrine that you're initiating now, finds basis in the Supreme Court decision. In the case of Constantino versus Quisa, GR number 106064, promulgated on October 13, 2005, it says, and I quote, nevertheless, there are powers vested in the president by the Constitution, which may not be delegated to or exercised by an agent or alter ego of the president. Justice Laurel, in his Ponencia in Villana case, made this very clear, and the decision quotes, Withal, at first blush, the argument of ratification may seem plausible under the circumstances. It should be observed that there are certain acts which, by their very nature, cannot be validated by subsequent approval or ratification by the president. There are certain constitutional powers and prerogatives of the chief executive of the nation which must be exercised by him in person and no amount of approval or ratification will validate the exercise of any of those powers by any other person. Such, for instance, in his power to suspend the writ of the habeas corpus and proclaim martial law, and the exercise by him of the benign prerogative of mercy. Now, in that decision of Constantino, Justice Art Panganiban made this doctrine. These distinctions hold true to this day. There are certain presidential powers which arise out of exceptional circumstances, and if exercise would involve the suspension of fundamental freedoms, or at least call for the supersedence of executive prerogatives over those exercised by equal branches of the government, the declaration of martial law, the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus, and the exercise of pardoning power, notwithstanding the judicial determination of guilt of the accused, all fall within this special class that demands the exclusive exercise by the president of the constitutionally vested power. The list is by no means exclusive, but there must be a showing that the executive power in question is of similar gravitas and exceptional import. Kaya yung po sinasabi nyo, merong justification. May ruling ang Korte Suprema. Hindi kaya nyo sinasabi ng mga abogado ng kabila, eh sabi nila, Eh, mali yung sinasabi ng mga abogado ni Presidente sapagkat pwedeng i-delegate yung power to grant amnesty. Maling-mali po sila ron. Ako ang nagsalita noong una niyan. Uh, I, 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 I'm not saying that uh, I claim exclusivity in the announcement. But I was thinking over the matter coming home. Sabi ko itong mga to, these are the powers that are granted to the President because they are, they, 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 they are supposed to fall in the category of an uh, an action by the state. Yung mga ganon na klase na uh, hindi pwede mong ma-delegate yan. Even if the president is sick, he cannot wait, then you'll have to wait until he dies or somebody takes over. But you cannot delegate that power to a subordinate, an alter ego, because, I said, it is an exercise of uh, state power. Eh, meron nga um... May logic naman yung sinasabi ng Korte Suprema sapagkat yung pong power to declare martial law at saka suspension of the privilege involves the deprivation of freedoms, of rights. rights. Doon naman sa pardoning power, nagkaroon na ng determination yung isang branch ng government, nag yan, yet it i-overturn ninyo. Kaya tama ko yung sinasabi nila na hindi pa pwedeng i-delegate sa ibang tao. Nakita mo as serious as a rebellion, had it succeeded, it could have caused government to overthrow. They could have overthrown government. So that's a very serious thing of pardoning a person who is out to destroy government. So it is by no means just a, a mere infraction of the law. It is as serious as the existence of the government itself. So when you are called upon uh, to task and to answer for that, and if there's any pardoning or amnesty, may concurrence of Congress na. It could not be gasmin 
concurring with Congress. That is what it amounts to. In the first place, there is no special power of attorney or authority or whatever that the president mm. left it to Gaswin to do it all together in one and to authorize him. To authorize him to investigate, I will concede to that. But the act of uh, granting amnesty with Gaswin and Congress concurring it's, it's just about me. I, I don't know how to, to reconcile it. In other, no problem, yes. I don't. In other words, Mr. President, even assuming that Trillanes was compliant, compliant of the mandatory requirements of applying under oath, wala na ako doon. Wala pa rin doon. Sapagkat lumalabas ngayon na talagang naliti, complete naliti. I, I, I would uh, rise and fall on the proposition that only the President himself physically doing the pardoning and granting the amnesty. In other words, yung pong rason nyo ay more on legal grounds. Hindi gaya yung sinasabi ng kritiko na political daw yung na naging dahilan. Constitutional uh, mandate. Mabigat yan. So, pag uh, if uh, the Supreme Court would disagree with me, then uh, that is a new development on jurisprudence and I would accept it. Pero ako, at first blush, any lawyer will always agree with me that that is personal and exclusive to the President of the Republic of the Philippines. Nagpunta naman po natin yung mga agam-agam ng taong bayan, palaging like yung critic nyo si Joe Masison, sinasabing kayo raw ay may sakit. Ano po bang masasabi nyo tungkol sa inyong kalusugan para marinig ng taong bayan? Ang inyong kasagutan dito. Alam mo si Sison, pati itong Magdalo. Sison Magdalo, pati itong mga ayaw sa akin. Yung talagang hindi tumanggap sa akin ever since the election. They have combined. And we have the evidence. And we have the conversation provided by a foreign country. Sympathetic to us. We do not have that sophistication, uh, but Meron and the connection will be shown maybe uh, any day now. Uh, I ask that it be declassified at uh, ipakita nila sa lahat. Nahihigop lahat eh. Alam nila yan. Nahihigop lahat. So they were in constant communication. So, sa punto po ng kalusugan eh, talagang malusog na malusog kayo, kaya nang nakikita ngayon ng taong bayan. Now, pagdating naman po dun sa binabanggit niyong Joma Sison, meron kayong binanggit po kasi na parang merong sabwatan o conspiracy mm. are, dun sa tatlong grupo. They are. It might be a loose conspiracy, but they are into it. Sabay-sabay sila. Ang sinasabi ko lang sa sundalo sa Republika ng Pilipinas, just be careful. Just be careful na yung pagsagwatan mm. ninyo dyan sa Magdalo. Because not, uh, Magdalo is not uh, all in agreement yung membership to destabilize or overthrow the government. Ako naman, I have stated my clear, uh, my, said my clear stand on the matter. If the armed forces think that I am not competent, that I am not uh, uh, qualified to be sitting here as president. I have discussed this matter with them in a command conference. Bahala kayo. Inyo. If you want a, another president, fine. I will not allow you to fight your own soldiers. Kasi ako ang, may, ang, ako ang may walang tao dyan. Yung police pati militar, isa lang yan. So I would not allow my soldiers to kill another soldier or a policeman shooting another soldier. Eh, kalokohan yan. Kung kayong mga sundalo, nang tignan ninyo, maniwala kay Katrillanes, nabigyan kayo ng pangangailangan ninyo at yung hindi hingi ninyo dumating sa inyo, 
go with them. I urge you to go to Trillianit. Yung kayong may nakita at uh, nakita inyong may gawa, may ginawa si Trillianis, para sa inyo, go to them. On stage, a mutiny or revolution or whatever. You are free to do that. As a matter of fact, I am encouraging you. Para tapos na. Hey, Trillianis, anong ginawa mo? Nagkalat ka? You committed, uh, uh, you Rokos there sa Makate, nakulong ka, minumura mo na at guberno. Ngayon, pinardon ka ni Pinoy, nandiyan ka na sa guberno, anong ginawa mo? Anong ginawa mo ba si Kunti na nakatulong sa sundalo? Ay sabi ko nga sa Marawi, bakbaka na, nanamatay na yung mga sundalo, pati yung mga pulis. Did I ever had the occasion to see you there. Wala, wala nga kayo. Simpatiya lang yung inyo, yung fraternity, magdalo, magdalo. But you never really cared for the poor uh, soldier. Wala, wala, wala kayo. Ako, binigyan ko ka lahat ng firearms. Kasi wala nang fixed bayonet nga. Lahat ng sundalo binigyan ko. Kasi in Esparo, eh. ito, I'm giving you a... a a fighting chance. And when I said I doubled the salary, I doubled it long before Marawi. It was a campaign promise. And I complied. Pero kung tingnan ninyo, mga sundalo, na mas mabuti si Trillanes, pati si Aquino, please, kindly go to them and stage uh, whatever you want to do. Pakita mo sa buong Pilipinas na kaya ninyo. Now, Mr. President, I am challenging Magdalo to start now. Sigurado ninyo na inyo ang sundalo, oh, fine. Kung kayong mga general ng gusto, di, sige. Pakita natin sa Pilipino <clears throat> kung anong gusto ninyo. Talagay ko po, eh, maliwanag naman yung hamon sa kanila. Now, kaugnay naman po doon sa mga rebelding komunista, meron po mong kahit na since hindi, mukhang hindi naman naniniwala na sila doon sa national leadership ng komunista sa grupo ni Joe Masiso, meron po mong kaya na kung po pwede raw bang ang local executives na ang makipag-dialogue sa hindi, mga komunista? Uh, at the end of the day, wala mang uh, resources on it, ito mga DSWD, lahat yan sila, but more importantly, the the major players there would be the local officials. Sila yung malapit sa tao yan. Eventually, the leadership will wilt. Lalaya yan. Wala na kasi sila yan. There is no such thing as an ideology na komunista. Yung number one na rasya, doon ang bursibik, pati yung mga mga bright ng komunista. Discredited. China, wala na. It's a capitalist country. Ano ba naman gusto nitong mga NPA dito? <clears throat> Except to kill. And they are complaining of human rights violation. But every day throughout the country, they're killing barangay captains, those sympathetic uh, with the government. Pati sundalo, these are violations of... Uh, they are terrorists. Na sabihin mo, let's try to uh, count uh, body bugs. Mm -hmm. Hindi, hindi na kalahati sa pinatay nila sa na mga sundalo noon pa. Season should face a trial sa talagang pagnahuli. Season is a terrorist and uh, as a terrorist, uh, wala nang, ako, I do not uh, see any leeway or enough elbow room for him to move around. Now, ginawang Pangulo, daling ko naman po kayo sa sitwasyon sa Mindanao. Meron pong Marcelo doon. Ang tanong po ng maraming kritiko, yung bang deklarasyon ng Marcelo ay tumugon sa mga issues that brought about by the Muslim rebellion? Nakakatulong ba ito? It has lessened, it has lessened criminality by and large. And the only way to do that is to conduct a survey amongst the people of Mindanao. The political leaders, they can call them, may mga number man yung mga istasyon, 
So maybe can, uh, they can have a, uh, conduct a, an interview. Or they can always ask their networks there to do the survey. Tingnan natin, ah, wala man akong problema, Sal. I mean, I, I, we can thrive on a war zone. We can uh, survive on a controlled condition. Para sa akin, wala yan. Ngayon, it was the, the military because uh, of the uprising sa Marawi. Marami namang namatay doon. Kaya that was the day that I was in Moscow negotiating to purchase more arms. Uh, but it was uh, good that I was able to uh, talk to uh, President Putin last minute near the airport. It was somewhere in Georgia, and he called me that if, can, I wait for, uh, if I can wait for about six hours, he, he would be in Moscow. And uh, just before I took off, I was given a chance, uh, almost one hour, a call, so, see defense uh, uh, secretary Lorenzana, pati si Caetano, pati si Bong. Nag-usap kaming tatlo at sinabi, bibigay siya ng armas, libre, gratis, basta for against terrorism. Tanga, kaya it came late because yung orders natin sa arms, sa Amerika, na istaymi because a congressman and a senator spoke against it. <clears throat> Ngayon, yung last order natin ng Glock uh, pistols, I was informed by uh, Trust Trade uh, na pumayag na raw because yung dalawang senador pumirma na daw. I did not know that in America, a senator, a legislator can take part in the functions of the executive department. Legislation na talaga sila. But if you need a clearance to buy, uh, that's something new to us, actually. Yung ating sinusunod na constitution, which is very similar to their constitution. The fact that maybe they signed something to finalize the purchase. Ako naman din na ako interesado. Kasi uh, medyo halos nabigyan ko na lahat sundalo. Few were taken from the soldiers violently yung pinatay by yung mga sparrow, the assassination. But by and large, uh, it could give them the confidence of going around with the gun. Alam mo, ang army kasi walang baril. Walang sidearm. So they go out naked. And I did not like it. Kasi pinagpapatay yung mga sundalo ko parang aso. So sabi ko, this cannot go on. You have to go out, just watch for the sparrow at the back, but use it to kill if you have to kill them. Now, Mr. President, may mga nakausap akong mga negosyante, mamamayan sa Marawi, it's Mindanao. At sinasabi po nila na mas kalmado sila ngayon na mayroong batas militar sa aire kesa noon. Eh, ang tanong ko po, to your personal knowledge, mayroon na po bang mga reklamo laban sa abuso ng militar? I'm not, I don't know. May mga checkpoint, checkpoint, but you know, uh, those are my orders. Na yung plain view, but if you are a suspect, you have to go down. Yung ordinary yung mamamayan, ng daan, hindi naman kailang kalkalin mo lahat eh. But those who are suspected of transporting or uh, traveling, escape, or are in the wanted list of the government, they have to go down. And that is my order and I take full responsibility of it. Otherwise, yung, walang, walang ipin itong Marcelo. Yung pong sa Marawi, nasupil natin yung ISIS noon, terrorist group na yon. Pero kung meron hubang pagkakataon na umatake na naman sila, gano kahanda ang pamalaan upang supuin ito? Well, we are not without limits actually, Sal. The, we cannot guard even the, the longest uh, coastline. A eh, coastline yan per, per island kung bilangin mo yan. So it's the Philippines is very porous, from the Pacific or from the Sulu Sea down to China Sea, tapos pa eko dito sa Taiwan. It's a really a vulnerable uh, uh, alley there. It's a corridor where they, where they can yung siabo pati yung armas. Ang my only lament there is that uh, 
there was this uh, importer who who ordered uh, M's uh, no, AK74. That is if 5.56. You can use the NATO. Ang sabi nila Armalite 5.56 in the hands of uh, plenty of uh, AK 74s, and it added power to the communism. I, I would like to see this person prosecuted, not only for uh, aiding the enemy, giving assistance, but uh, it's an outright uh, conspiracy. Now, you pung bang sa moral basic law. Matagal na ito'y mm, pinaglaban ng mga advo advocates dito at ito'y natuloy na napirmahan nyo. Eh, ang tanong po ba, ito po ba'y makakabigay talaga ng solusyon? Sapagat sinasabi ng mga ibang kritiko at mga tagaroon din eh, na ito'y hindi magbibigay solusyon. Anong palagay nyo rito? Well, it will not satisfy all Mindanaoans and for those who are fighting uh, which uh, correctly they claim as uh, historical injustice, which is really true. They were the first Adam and Eve there. Problem is uh, this uh, Bangsamoro law must pass because if not, it would again create uh, uh, trouble there. Uh, it could be an irritation. It could be anger. It could be a, be a way of just uh, terminating all peace talks and going to war. Uh, marami tayo doon. We have the uh, original insurgents, revolutionaries of the Bang, of the Moro in Mindanao, which is purely territorial. Yung nawala ng lupa nila with the uh, inroads and coming of civilization in Mindanao. Now, yun ang isa. Uh, the other is the insurgents who have become true blue, full-blooded revolutionaries. This time, it is not a question of territory anymore. It's a question of an Islamic world. Yan ang mahirap. And until now, they are massing nung nakaalis na. They are losing, they are being pounded heavily in the Middle East. And, and they are looking for another uh, uh, headquarters. It could not be in Indonesia because uh, uh, fundamentally, poor man sila mo. They, there could be some uh, skirmishes. It could not be Indonesia, Malaysia, kasi poor Muslim yan sila and uh, Brunei. The ideal uh, area would really be Mindanao. There's a mixed crowd there. I think the Christians are predominant in number. So, if you want to kill infidels, as they proudly claim, uh, an infidel is one who is not a Muslim. I hope that they would not, uh, you know, uh, insist on that uh, bankrupt and hollow ideology because it could be a reason for a communal war, a bad bloodbath. Mr. President, meron pong mga lehitimong concern yung mga nasasakop ng bangsa Moro Basic Law. Gaya nila Norm Iswari, si Governor Sakurtan, sinasabi po nila na ayaw nilang masakop doon sa grupo ng nasasakupan ng batas na yon. Eh, ano pong magiging solusyon ng ating pangunan? There are areas of claim by the bangsa Moro and incorporated in the law. Uh, for example, uh, ang Basilan, then you have uh, uh, Lanao, but Lanao, the north is also included. Simply, uh, Governor de Maporo does not want it. He wants just uh, the present situation to continue. So, there's a stalemate there. And of course, Miswari, until now, has really hung on to his uh, horses. So he's just waiting for the right, the most opportune time to talk to me. And if it's not possible, then uh, he can have his options.
hindi ko mapigilan. But in the meantime, I am talking with Ms. Wari. And because he's a man of his uh, word, uh, medyo kumpante pa ako ngayon. But there is always a time for reckoning. And they cannot wait forever. So somehow, someday, something has got to give. So that is how Mindanao is. Now, if we can talk to reason uh, to prevail over everybody, it would be something like uh, uh, we will just all agree. And if it's uh, uh, <clears throat> acceptable to the others, uh, we will create the Bangsamoro country and uh, incorporate it in the Constitution as a, an autonomous region, maybe just like uh, Hong Kong, uh, China. Uh, give it more leeway. And of course, uh, ang the number one, alam mo, sa totoo lang, sino ba yung masabi legalized gambling? Mura ang bigas galing Saba. Actually, kung hayaan mo lang ang ating authorities dyan, kung ang mga taga Basilan lang, hulo, sumuangga magbili ng bigas, sobra-sobra ang bigas. Kasi mura. So that's one option which I would like to talk about. Not really to agree to it uh, entirely. But talk about uh, Sunny Dominguez, Pernia, and uh, I don't know kung nandito si DTI, na kung magbili sila ng bigas doon, if they, allow, if they are allowed, walang problema sa gutom. Talagang may, mamura ang bigas doon. But wala tayong, ano, wala tayong, we don't get anything there. Uh, Ibarter nila, whatever it is, what arrangement, we'll just have to control the rice dyan sa mga moro Baka sabihin nila ginugutom sila and the Christians who cannot really afford the right. So there are really many options. Uh, maybe just give me about uh, total nandiyan na yung setup. I'll just uh, set up the barter trade again. And uh, up to uh, Kulo or Siasi. Depending on the kung papayag ang uh, uh, the finance people. Hindi tayo gano'ng kadesperado kung if we allow the, the, the more ako kung talagang walang supply na totoo but we have about 4.8 million metric tons of paano tayo magkaroon ng mayroong pang dadating na inimport yung iba nandiyan lang talaga sa bodega ang sinabi ko naman sa mga trader ay 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 uh, <clears throat> to be, uh, ayaw kong mag but left with no choice and the the lack of rice is uh, artificial the shortage is caused by man-made manipulation I would not hesitate to kasi may bigas eh import man naman tayo import hindi naman tayo nag, nag hinto hanggang ngayon and more are coming so why are sabihin mo na nawala yung bigas Eh, kung tignan mo yan, it's in the warehouses. So, ano pong ginagawa ng pamalaan tungkol dito? Dahil sinasabi natin walang rice shortage, and yet, wala silang mabili sa mga lugar. Yan na nga, nga sabi ko, yung iba kinokontrol, they are back into it again. The bad practice of manipulation to make money at the expense of your countrymen. Yan ang ayaw ko. Kaya I do not want to exercise extraordinary powers there. You haven't seen me. Sino bang kinulong ko dito? Sino bang... Well, I threaten those who refuse to pay. Masabi na, Diktador, in what way? Show me. Aside from yung campaign ko against uh, drugs, kung yun ang basis ninyo, then I'm sorry, it will continue. Because if I renege now in my campaign against drugs, which is... Uh, worldwide uh, expansion sa lahat na ang drugs natin is not controlled by the Philippines anymore Bambo Triad sila yung humahawak yan that's why wala nang laboratories dito 
Alam nila papatayin talaga sila. Alam nila papatayin ko talaga sila. So they rely on yung tinatapon tapos nagyan ng GPS. Kasi yung dito, talagang yayariin ko sila. Wala na tao, huwag na, huwag na ako magtago-tago. If you destroy my country, I will. I will destroy you. If you destroy our daughters and our sons, I will also destroy you. Yan lang. I, I, I will just return the favor. Mr. President, yung binanggit niyo po sa Sir Ishior, ibabalik ko lang ng konti. Mm. Meron kayong binanggit na kailangang i-raid yung mga warehouses at baka maraming nagtatago doon. Ano po bang latest ito? Have you ordered the raiding of these warehouses para malaman natin kung sino mga orders? Jason Aquino has requested that he be relieved already. Relieved from? He said as he's tired, and he cannot cope up with the laro dyan sa inside, which is always ordinary happening in government because we cannot be in agreement all the time. I will scout for a new one. And uh, the only way is to import more. Mag-buffer ako. Ang sinabi ko noon, ang buffer ko, I need about 60 days of buffer. Ngayon, kung makakulang, I would simply open up Saba. Ay, pag Saba, pagbili tayo, sabi nga yung, I think it was when you said that you would allow smuggling. Uh, nga, doon, yun pala mm -hmm. ang ibig niya sabihin. Kala kong outright smuggling na anywhere. Sabi ko ko, we can always make arrangements. I can only, I can only say you're allowed to buy you the your daily consumption plus seven days plus thirty days, three hundred sixty-five a year, computed per family. Oh, you can import this much. Control lang. Sabi mo walang bigas. O sige. Don't tax sixteen, eighteen. O, di bilhin ninyo. Bakit ko isakripisyo ang Pilipino dahil lang sa taxes kung wala namang kinakain? Mr. President, meron po ba tayong programa kaugnay doon sa... Kasi, ang pagkakalap ko, kahit nung bata pa ako eh, yung mga tagaibang bansa, nagpunta rito, nag-aral kung paano papalaguin ang pagtanim ng palay. At sila eh, nung bumalik sa kanila, eh, tayo na bumibili sa kanila. In other words, parang may problema tayo ng nag-produce ng palay dito sa ating bansa. Do we have any program to improve on this? Yes. In some places, we're doing it. Mayroon tayo dito ng mga new crops of quality. Ang problema talaga dito, weather. Also. You must reckon with... There's another one coming, by the way. It will hit you by next day. So better prepare to just take a a break and lie down. Ang, ang, ganito kasi ang history. Gusto kong mat, 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 malaman ng, ng Pilipina. Right after the war po, uh, everybody was scrambling to rebuild their countries, their nations. Uh, we were uh, second to Japan, they say. Mm -hmm. And they keep on hammering it until we became third, fourth, fifth. You know, uh, somebody must understand, at the very least, that may binigay ang Panginoong Diyos sa ibang tao na hindi binibigay sa atin. And what is that? So, where everybody was rebuilding their nations, they also work on the resources, natural oil. Indonesia struck oil, Malaysia struck oil. Brunei has plenty of it. The Philippines had none. So, yung langis, kita mo na pag-import ng langis, taas ang presyo ng gulay, taas ang presyo ng pagkain, taas ang presyo ng pamasahe. Kasi nga, yung may mga ibang bansa na binigyan ng Panginoong Diyos ng oil, which would It's about two-thirds of our uh, movement. Lahat makita mo sa lahat dito, puro oil yan. You cannot, hindi mo ma-start yung machinery mo to build those kind of mga ganun, itong lamesa, pati itong baso, without an equipment or a machine. 
Nakailangan ah, ng oil. Makina niyan, anong ipinapaandar? The oil. Just like yung sakyanan. Wala man tayo niyan. We do not have in abundance the supply of oil. We had to buy it. And we are always at the mercy of the international play of oil. Hindi mo kaman narinig sa Indonesia, nagkaroon sila ng crisis doon. Because may oil sila. Yan ang hindi binigay ng Panginoong Diyos sa atin. Hindi yan ang explanation. But one of the things kung bakit ganito tayo. Kaya kung may oil lang tayo, hindi ah, na tayo mag-import, magamit tayo ng oil natin, so it constitutes about how much pamasahe, pagkain. Ang second dyan is I am ordering the police and the military to dismantle all checkpoints. Lalo na ang military to enforce kasi sa bukid sila. Kasi yung may mga DNR, well of course, uh, with due respect to uh, yung mga NFA, yung mga way, yan dyan ang nakawan eh. Dyan yung magbigayan, tapos added to the cost of it. Pagdating dito, mahal na. If I can just have my way, and, uh, if I can travel, tapos uh, all the way to the Lantern Birth of Luzon, Tignan ko lang kung ano pa. Sinakarali ko sa nahayaan mo na you fight the uh, communist on the side. Kung wala ka namang makita ang sundalo dyan sa highway, bakit ka mag... You do these skirmishes uh, outside kasi it would affect the economic life of the country. Pag handyan pa yung mga uh, pure of fisheries, lahat yan, pati yung NFA. Kaya recently I ordered the, the really relief of all dito sa Nueva Ecija. And uh, pinakausap ko yung mga tao, Pilipino, some uh, Filipino people, just to report it and I will... Uh, nandyan yung 888 eh. Kaya eh, ano mo lang, ilagay mo lang kung saan. Lagyan mo ng pangalan. Pag hindi, report mo lang ang... I will call the police maybe there or the appropriate uh, agency to do something about it. Now, Mrs. President, ang pangunahing suliranin ngayon ng ating mga kababayan ay yung pagtaas ng presyo ng mga bilihin. Talagang isang malaking dagok sa kanila yun. Sabi niyo po kanina, tayo walang langis dito, kaya napuparisa tayong magangkat. E tumas po ang presyo ng langis, kaya nagkaroon ng reaksyon. Ang tanong po ng mga kababayan natin, Ano po bang pwedeng gawin ng pamalaan, maliban pa doon sa binanggit nyo kanina? Well, uh, uh, sabi ng mga economic managers natin, uh, all throughout the year, uh, except uh, August, no, uh, we were hitting 6 plus, 4 plus lang on the average. Now, I am not denying because everybody in this uh, planet Earth is suffering. We have our own problems. We cannot escape that uh, kind of thing about prices, it has, it has not lowered any, any notch. Pataas ng pataas talaga yan. Pataas ng pataas. Taas ng inflation so, rate. Mm, at saka yung inflation rate medyo mataas. Now, as I said, uh, the economic managers are working on it. We are, we're having a conference, a cabinet meeting right after this. Then I'll have the chance also to ask, uh, to, to ask questions. Uh, yun lang ang ma ko. Kaya nga yung Supreme Court ruling ngayon na ibinasora yung uh, application ni Tillyanis for a restraining order. Hindi ko pa nga nabasa eh. So I just pointed out to you one outstanding feature which I think will spell the difference between who is right and who is wrong. And that is, uh, wala na yung aking sa application and narration of guilt except that uh, even if it's perfect, uh, si Gaswin, si Borges, okay, ibigang ko pa naman, Sir, uh, this is not personal. I consider you a very good friend. Uh, siya yung nag, ano, ng commission, ng constitute ng commission. Tapos they investigated, then they recommended 
for amnesty, all. Tapos pati siya, he recommended to the president any cover letter, and then he signed it. He was actually protecting Aquino. And they are all the time, sa lahat ng anon, they were protecting Aquino. Now, Mr. President, ibalik ko po kayo dun sa rising prices. Is it reasonable to assume and to assure the public na dahil may ginagawa naman tayo, napansamantala lamang itong paghihirap nila? Yes, I said, uh, uh, in it, uh, uh, maybe they would view it as an act of desperation. But it's not because the shortages are always there. The economic life of a country cannot be all beds of roses. So, marami akong option. Hindi wala namang hito yung importation natin. But if worse comes to worse, I will open Sabah. Ayan talaga. Free for all na. Busog lahat. Mura. Ngayon, kung ipagbili mo dito yan sa labas ng areas of Tawi-Tawi and Nolo, malulugi na tayo. Pero ngayon, ang gusto ko, which I have been advocating day one, sabi ko yung tarification. Alisin na lang yan, free for all, anybody can import. That is why I'm going for uh, somebody, uh, I, may hinihintay lang ako na tao. I think if he, they will be retiring something. Uh, I want this guy because he's honest and I believe in him. And uh, he does not do anything bullshit. So, ilagay ko yan dyan. And, uh, yun. All he has to do is to execute the, it's just to implement the orders of the economic manager. Uh, I may recommend to Congress the abolition of the National Food uh, Council. Uh, it has done. It has not done any purpose, and it's not good. It, it only hinders the operation. Because it should be just handled by one man with the best interest of uh, the nation. And he said, "You need not have four or five. Uh, isang tao lang." Gusto ko, ha, kung negosyante. Even if he's Chinese, if he's adept to that kind of uh, job, then he can have it. Pero may hinintay lang ako because I want also a... Uh, they would be retiring in succession uh, in the coming days. Uh, I can choose and utilize the others also. Now, Mr. President, may I call your attention to your crusade against drugs? Despite your passion and dedication to dismantle the drug medicine in this country, sabi nyo nga, talagang walang tigil ang pagpasok. Eh, ang tanong po eh, ano bang pwedeng asahan ng gobyerno o ng tao kaugnay sa programa natin laman sa droga? Meron po ba tayong masasabing malapit na o talagang matagalan to hanggang matapos ang termino ninyo? Look, uh, drugs, uh, just like in America, historical yan. If America, the most powerful country in the world with all the equipments and uh, gadgets, uh, ha, la, they, 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 are able, they, they are ready to raise their hands up. They cannot even, they cannot even control sa inyong losa, we're just in the border. Tayo pa dia, we are again, we are regarding the high seas and how do you, how do you count the many ships that you have? So it's really a hard fight. But because it is the lure of the money, the greed, they will continue. But just to tell you, somehow, ang law and order dito, lalo na yung sa petty, ano, the crimes in uh, on the streets is naglesen. As long as masunod lang yung police, walang tambay, wala na yung sabi na bahala na yung korte magsabi illegal. Uh, basta sabihin lang, if you have no business there, do not drink in the sidewalks because that is. And if you're just standing there drinking or sitting down or squatting, I will kick your ass. 
Yan yan, tapos yung mga bata because they are the couriers. It has lessened the criminality in the streets uh, of Manila and other places. Eh, pagdating naman po doon sa ang palaging pangalanda ka, nangangalanda ka ng mga sinatawag na human rights groups, hmm. na yung mga polis natin ay inaabuso ang kanilang kapangyarihan sa paglaban sa droga. Ano po bang pwede natin sabihin ang, sa kanila? Mayroon dito mga polis na sa droga talaga. Yan ang problema. And that is the, really the headache also of Albayalde. So, sinabi ko naman na ano, pag nandiyan ka sa droga, ikaw yung mauna. And uh, true enough, we're doing it. Hindi ko lang masabi. But pagkatapos nito, sabihin ko kung sino. Pidea, mayroon rin. The head of an agency somewhere in the south of Manila. So where are they now? So they're dead. E sinabi ko sa inyo, huwag. Huwag na lang tayo magbulahan. Kasi yung report na dumadating sa akin, galing man din sa inyo. <clears throat> But we would know, ang una talaga is the lifestyle. Hindi mo kahintay. Kapitan ka, then suddenly you have a big house, a subdivision, three cars. Like Trillianis. Maraming bahay, sikreto lang, maraming. And ang problema kay Trillianis is that uh, he is uh, crucifying bongo. Uh, for entering into business with government. And there was a time in the Navy's history. Kayong mga sundalo, bilib mo kayo kayo ng Trillanes. Hindi punta na kayo doon. Ang tatay niya nasa servisyo pa. A ang siya nasa servisyo na, sundalo na siya. Ang, ang transaksyon yung karamihang supply sa Navy, ang nanay niya. Kung ayaw niyo maniwala, tanungin niyo yung Navy. Na kung yan ang mga gusto ninyo na leader, I said, go to no Trillianes. If that is the kind of soldiers na gusto ninyo, sumampa na kayo doon. Kasi kung lahat kayo ganon, <coughs> I will not sacrifice to serve the country na meron akong sundalo ng ganon. Now, Mr. President, in relation to your fight against corruption, some time ago you expressed appre not apprehension but exasperation. Na parang yung corruption na eh, hindi ma tigil tigil, marami na kayo tinanggal sa miembro pa ng kabinet na malapit sa inyo tinanggal yun na kahit mga kamag-anak, mga fraternity brats. Pero parang hindi masawata ang agus ng corruption. Ang tanong ko ay eh, Ano kaya ang nagbibigay hadlang upang maging matagumpay ang iyong laban sa korupsyon? What, what constraints? Well, the only way is, nandito na ako, maybe I have reached the limit also of my persona, hindi popularity. May persona nga hanggang dyan lang ako. So, yan ang masasabi ko nga. Itong noon, yung sa last command conference, I already had a copy doon sa AFP, hospital ng mga sundalo. Tapos binibigyan ko yan ng 50 million each. Ang AFP pa yung bilo na dalawang hospital yan eh. Para lang dyan sa medisina. At ang PGH binigyan ko ng 100 million. That was the eternal complaint of the doctors there. Sabi ko, would 100 million suffice? And sabi nila, ano yan, Mayor? Uh, buwan, uh, ano, taunan? Sabi ko, no. Siguro ang taunan na was 36 uh, million. Sabi ko, every month, para lahat na makatao, makatikim ng gamot. Every month, tinawagan ko ang pagkor. Lahat ng kikita niya, ibuhos niya dyan. Ang AFP, binigyan ko ng 50 para sa mga retiree. Yung dalawang ospital nila, 
tag 50-50 para doon sa nag-retire, yung medication. Right after Marawi, I released 500 million for intervention lang sa mga sugat nila, prosthetics. Mr. President, ngayon, kung sabihin niyo wala akong ginawa, ano ang kasalanan ko? Kasalaban ko si Trillanes, magsimpatiya kayo? Eh kung ganun, kung ganun kayo, klase do doon kayo. Doon kayo. Sinabi ko naman sa'yo, just tell me. The major commanders can come here and we'll have coffee and I'll say, sige, inyo na. Gusto ninyo, inyo na. Then let us see how you do it. Kaugnay po, Mr. President, ang sinasabi niyo mga ginawa niyo pagbibigyan ng benefits sa uh, armed forces. Meron po bang programa ang pamalaan? Doon po sa mga special children, handicapped, kasi nakikita ko walang facility rito para doon sa mga mga ganitong uri ng tao sa ating bayan. Meron po ba tayong programa tungkol doon? Meron, sabi ko, PGH. They have, they have 100 million a month. You can just imagine. Maubos kaya nila yan. E kung maubos nila, di, lahat po rumidisina sa tao, hindi maligaya ako. And I'll, uh, I'll add more. I'm referring, Mr. President, doon po sa kabuuan ng Pilipinas. Oh. Kung bawat uh, probinsya, meron tayo. Oh. We have that. And I said, uh, yung gusto ko yung prosthetics, yung titanium. Magaan. Hindi yung parang plastic. Wala na yan. Ayaw ko na yun. Kaya nagalit nga ako minsan yung ano. Eh, kakabulsit ko lang itong, itong sanaya. Yung... Inalis ko lahat yung mga tao doon. Dito na naman yung report ng medisina ng sundalo na ghost delivery. Na wala, basta bayad lang pero walang dumating ng medisina. Ngayon kung yan ang magmalasakit si Trillanes sa yun ang ganun, doon kayo. Never mind me, I can survive. You can kill me, you can oust me. Sige Pakita ninyo sa taong Pilipino na mas marunong kayo. Eh, kay, kay Trillanes, alam ninyo, si simpatiya-simpatiya ka dyan, ang inisip niya, sarili niya. Noong panahon ni Aquino, nandiyan na siya, anong ginawa niya? He traveled to China nine times. Yan nga ang ano ni Paildon. Eh. On his last visit, we lost this Scarborough Shore. Kinabukasan. Ako naabotan ko ganun lang. Ayaw ko makipagira kasi ang unang mamatay kayo na walang laban. Kaya ako, ano lang muna. Storya, storya. Sabi niyo, galit kayo wala akong ginawa. O ngayon, kung magsabi ako, sige, punta tayo. Kasi puro matay galit lahat. Ilang mababiyuda dito? Kaya kayo pabilib dyan sa just because military, military, mista, mista. Alam mo, ang gumastos dyan, hindi mga mista ninyo, gumastos dyan, Pilipino. Magsimpatya-simpatya kayo. Hindi na kayo nahiya. Mr. President, yung relasyon natin sa China, kamakailan eh meron silang mga pahayag na mga medyo hack. May ayaw nilang yung mga aeroplano natin, lumilipad doon sa isang okay, sa kanila. Okay, nag-away kami. We had a little bit of a... Hindi naman animosity. Kasi yung Navy, palapit doon, eh parang sinisigawan na, you Filipinos, you get that, you will be causing trouble. Eh, samantalang kaibigan tayo, hindi eh, sa pakiusapan, total may claim tayo dyan. They know they are in the eyes of the world. Atin yan, hindi kanila. So the least that we can do, since I cannot make a move to remove them forci uh, forcibly because it'll end up in a war, 
which we are we, we will be losing wala talaga ay nagaano lang ako muna kasi wag sabi kay maniwala kay intriga yang uh, China China si o sige ngayon kung magsabi ako go tayo mabubuhay kaya kayo it will result in a slaughter pinag-isipan namin yan hindi lang ako ang military sa cabinet ko Baka sabihin ninyo, akin-akin lang yan. Sir President, iwan na natin ang China sandali. Puntaan po no, natin yung traffic. Yung traffic kasi, yun ang problema, maalaking problema. May, meron ba tayong programa para maibsan na? Look, ang, ang EDSA right at the beginning, we raise the possibility of being granted emergency power. Okay. Yun talaga, you cannot improve on things without money nowadays. That is accepted. Kada galaw mo pera. Now you want me to uh, install uh, some uh, measures that would mitigate us uh, at the very least. Eh, pag, pag, uh, paglabas lang ang unang lumabas sa newspaper, instead of baka tawagin kami or they would have a dialogue kung anong gawin ninyo sa emergency powers, how much are you going to borrow and what is the purpose of this and that? Ang narinig ko, ah, hindi, malaki ito, ano, para this is prone to corruption. Sabi ko, wag na. Kung ganun lang naman ang tingin ninyo sa akin, di wag na tayong maghiram. Do not give me powers anymore. Just leave EDSA as it is. Ayan. Yun ang promise ko nga, EDSA, that I will... Ano ang gagamitin ko dyan? Laway ko. Pero kung marinig mo na sana, ah, hindi, malaki ito, corruption lang ito. Kung wala kayong tiwala sa akin, hindi, huwag na. Ako na ngayon ang tumanggi. Ayaw ko na. Prof. Edsa, punta naman natin ang Burakay. Matanggap pa iho ba ang rehabilitation ng Burakay at talaga bang bubuksan na ito? I don't know. I will uh, wait for the recommendation of uh, the speculation that uh, uh, there, uh, there will be a soft opening or something like that. But uh, I leave it to Anio, uh, Simato, and uh, si si itong sa tourism si Berna. Sila na mga mag-usap niyan. So bahala na sila. They can vote on it. Oh, there are three of them voting. Voting to for the opening. Fine. Ayun po, Mr. President, yung sa natural resources, yung sa mining natin, ano po bang you express? I have uh, mining kasi. Uh, may pera rin yan para sa gobyerno. But uh, one of these days, uh, uh, I would like to uh, maybe ask everybody to take a ride. And you can see the lot of parang tansan sa bukid. Puro buta. Naawa ako sa bayan ko. So, to lang. Kailangan natin ng pera. Pero kung maglipad ka ng Mindanao, especially sa Eastern, yung butas yung parang tapay ng coke, kikita mo sa taas, brown, brown. Tapos yung siltesyo na hulog doon sa dagat. So, it killed the, killed the marine life. Hanggang no. doon sa inabot ng siltesyo. Huling katanungan na lang po, Mr. President. Huwag muna. Oh, okay, meron pa isang katanungan. Dito sa... Meron, te, sa pinasa ang papel dyan. No? Eh, tigilan ko na raw eh. At oh. meron pa cabinet meeting. Anyway, pa meron... Ayag ka rin utusan kanila. Meron, meron po akong katanungan. Ito'y naririnig natin sa mga taong key players o gustong maging key player, hindi mga pasok. Yung problema raw natin sa telecommunications, there appears to be a monopoly ng dalawang giant corporations. And according to this gustong pumasok, ito daw pong ating NTC eh nag impose ng maraming kondisyon na umaatras sila. Para bang ayaw nilang kayo maging matagumpay sa pagpasok ng third player. Ano po ba ang masasabi nyo? Sabi nga, December. Uh, I will... Uh, Maybe late uh, 
early November, pag wala pa, I'll take over. Mm. Ilagay ko yan sa office of president. And uh, I will invite all dito negosyante and I will decide in front of them. Kung sino. Dito, I, 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 will, I will give me your uh, position papers. I'll read it. Give me about uh, 30 minutes. Then I'll come back and we'll tell them now. I will decide. Yun na. At ibigay na yung linya. And ayaw lang ibigay yung linya. Sabi ko, kunin mo. Get it. I'll expropriate it. I'll pay you. But you wait until kingdom come. Total, originally, binilibre man yan. Bakit nagkaroon na ng mga costing-costing? You bear the cost and you bear the burden. Ano pong status, Mr. President, ng federalismo natin ngayon? Ganyan, teka mo, kasi yan ang problema tala sa gobyerno. Yung, uh, kaya sa gobyerno, pag, uh, na, talagang papatayin ka. You know, I've been waiting for that decision, critical decision, until now. Wala. Eh, di, expropriate ko na lang. Hmm. Sabi may ginasto sila, hindi ako magbayad. Why should I pay? It was given free. I was told. So why did you have to sell it to somebody and sell it again? What do you... How, uh, how soon can we resolve this problem? I will resolve it by the early, late October and early October, November. By Christmas, alam na ng mga tao na sino yung third player. Hindi masyado rin ako because I'm worried about itong Louis Bid, Louis Bid, how siyaw. I will select yung pinaka magandang record na walang breakdown. So what? Why should I buy the cheapest when gano'n Louis Bid, Louis Bid? Puro katarantaduhan yan. Maya maya, natutunaw na yung kurente. Ay, let's say, huwag na lang. I will choose the best. Yung pinakamahal and with the best track record in the business. Ayaw ko yung Louis Bid, Louis Bid. Gusto ko ikuha ko, sabi ko dito. O sige, you decide for me. I will wait for uh, your decision. Wala, wala ako dyan tiwala sa ganun. Louis Bid, Louis Bid, it always ends up in a disaster. Daling ko naman po kayo doon, pumasok tayo sa trend, yung trend law. Meron nagsasabi na, isa ito sa mga day lang kung bakit nagkakaroon ng problema ang ating ekonomiya. Meron nagmumungkain na kung pwede, huwag mo nang implement. What are your thoughts about this? Alam, dapat malaman ng taong bayan that the only source of income, kung baga ako yung uh, Pilipinong, bayang Pilipino, ang source ng bulsa ko, kung saan ako, sa taxes. Hmm. Yung buwis na kinukolekta ko. Hindi ako pwede dito sa Central Bank utosan ko na mag-imprinta ka na mag-imprinta lang hanggang isang milyong sakong pera. Because tayo, kung ano ang, ang kayamanan ko, kung ako sabihin, ako ay may ikta, isang iktarya lang, puno ng durian, tapos puno ng mangustin, pagkatapos at then, of the day, yan lang ang kikitain ko. Eh, samantala, yung iba, may 100 hectares, puno lahat, nandyan na lahat, mas kita So, mas mayaman siya kaysa atin. So, yung aking income ko, pati income niya, kasi mas marami siyang napabili, mas maraming eroplano, barko, wala man tayo. May telepono nga, kailangan ka pa rin na sa labas. Hindi, gastos ng tired gastos, wala naman tayong kinikita. Kasi ang pera natin yan lang. O yan. Ngayon, yung ekonomiya mo is, ilang pera ang maimprinta mo? Ang pera ang maimprinta mo, kung ang, ang negosyo ko, 50,000 lang. Ah, ang yan, ang value ng economy ko. So, it, itatali ko dyan sa 50,000 lang ang mga Ngayon yung iba, Amerika, tag 500 hectares, punong puro sila. So mas marami silang maimprinta good for 500 million. Ganoon lang ang simple pagtingin uh, ko. Ang 
ang balor mo? Ilang Pilipino may trabaho? Ilang mga Pilipinong walang trabaho? Ilang Pilipinong may kumikita? Ilang eroplano ang napabili natin? Ilang barko ang nagawa natin? Ilang factories pa dito? At ilang Pilipino talaga ba may sweldo lahat? Pagka gano'n na may sweldo, may factory marami, mayaman tayo. Napapabili tayo. Tayo sige lang bili sa labas. Kukunti pa lang ngayon ang export natin. Kaya tayo na tumatawag ng mga investors. Dito kayo magnegosyo para ang tao may trabaho. At yung finished product i-export. Sila yung may-ari pero tayo may cut dyan. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng ekonomiya natin. Simple yung pagkasabi lang. Ngayon wala masyado tayo. Nandiyan pa yung KMU, sige strike. Strike, strike nila, di magsara. Sinong magutom? Pilipino. Kasi kayo nagpapadala ng... Ayaw ninyong humintay kasi alam ninyo walang pera. Walang negosyante ngayon magpapasok na after three months mag-strike kayo, malugi yung kapital niya. Kaya yung mga tao na yan, nagsibatan. Kasi sa China, walang strike. Wala lahat. Trabaho lang. Dito, marami, yung mga left, sinakyan ng mga komunista, hindi ninyo alam. Kita mo dyan sa daan, ano ang purpose niya? Pangsira. Ayaw magtrabaho. Gusto magsali ng strike. Adi ako hanggang dyan lang. At Pagdating ng araw, sa gabi sabihin ko, sinabi ko na sa inyo, anong gusto ninyo? Hindi ako Diyos. Kailangan ito hirap ng lahat. Ngayon kung gusto ninyo, maniwala dyan sa komunista, kasi alam mo naman ang komunista, gustong mag-take over sa gobyerno, itong malakan yan. Yun dyan sila. Armed struggle. Pinapadaan sa armas. If that is what you want, magpatalo kayo dyan sa mga ganon, sasama-sama kayo, edi eh, kayo. Total, pagdating ng panahon, ako, may saving sa mo, kabili ako ng bigat. Kayo, hindi eh, kausapin ninyong military, magkonsabo kayo ni Sison. Basta yung yelo na yan, may grupo dyan, nakadikit kay Sison, at si Trillianis, may personal contact. Alam na ng military yan. Ngayon ninyong mga, eh, eh, gusto ninyo, Mayroong intelligence yan every unit. Tanongin ninyo kung ano ang nangyayari. Bakit? Gusto lang mag-take over. Bakit? Bakit? Eh, sayo, mas guwapo daw siya. Di. So, pero ang baba ng... Ano mga matutunan mo sa Jesus Mario Sep? Nung nag-ano ka sana sa Warton, mag-seminar ka gaya kay Rojas, Bibili pa ako sa po. Yan lang ang level of thinking mo. At ako pumasa dahil sa tatay ko. O iloko-loko. Hindi ka torpe. I became a lawyer 20 years after my father's death. Hindi ka gaya mo. Tatay mo na dyan servisyo. Ang nanay mo nag-negosyo sa Navy. Dapat malaman yan. Sir President, balik po tayo sa ekonomiya. Yung build, build, build. Ano na po ba yung status nun? Kasi two years ago, excited ang lahat ng tao. Maraming mga tatay yung mga estruktura. Yung airport natin may problema. Ano na po ba ang status nun? Meron na bang Meron isa? Meron iba. Nagpapatuloy na. Yung iba naman, wala. Yung iba naman kasi uh, ecological uh, questions. Kung gaya ka lang mag-reclaim mag ka ng the whole of... Uh, you know, it's easy to do that. Landfill lang yan eh, punuin mo. The problem is, ang destruction sa marine life. Puno yan, puno mo saan yung isda pupunta. Mamamatay yung marine life dyan eh. So, a lot of uh, the marine life there would die. And they have to go further and further. Eh, nakaka, ang supply ng isda nga, yung kaya lang ng Filipino, bagay, hindi naman ako makain ng baboy. Eh, ma-deplete. Ma, ma, ma 
Sana yan sila mangisda. Ngayon, di doon na sa bandang China. Pag nahuli sila doon, it's not that easy really to. You have to maintain a balance there. Eh, paano po yung problema natin sa airport? Na karoon lang ng crash ng isa na naapekto nga ng lahat ng mga pasahero at mga airlines. Yun, sana dapat uh, may automatic plan A, plan B ang Clark. Tsaka mag ano, ng isang lane na muna. Yung sa pasahero, dalawang lane man yan, kung saan yung traffic papasok sa umaga, buksan mo itong isang lane dito pasalubong. Isang lane lang dito. Pero meron na po bang proyekto na maaaring isipin ng tao na, oh, malapit na yan, mag-uumpisa na. Meron na po bang gano'n? Oo. Oh. Yeah, Na-award na eh. So, how soon well, will this plenty. project start? Uh, Ramon Ang is uh, there. Uh, yung consortium nila sa SM. Uh, we, uh, nakita ko maganda. Magkakaroon uh, po ng bagong airport? Sangli. Magkakaroon ng bagong airport tayo? Mm. Sa Sangli at saka sa Bulacan. Bulacan. In preparation dito, mag, we were handling about 40 million na eh. So, another 5 years or 39, going 40. By that time, 5 years from now, talagang masikip ng mga. But EDSA will remain. You know. Ngayon nga, ang rason dyan, gusto ko nga sana unahin. Kaya ako naghigit ng emergency power, kaya kay Ramos, pati kay Corey. Sabi naman nila sa Congress, uh, oo, ilagyan sa kurakot. Uh, sabi ko, kung ganun, huwag na lang. So I never brought up the matter again. Ayaw ko na. The if I prejudge, so what's the use? Meron naman po ang ginagawa ng Pangulungan kaugnay dito sa inyong advocacy ng federalism. Well, in the provinces, it's gaining ground kasi yung malayo talaga ng Manila, historically, ang Manila lang talaga ang pinakamaganda kasi binubuhos yung pera dito because it's a capital uh, region, hindi na nga uh, capital city. Pero yung mga kasi nang, ma marami ang mga, mga mabibigat taga, taga ano, bihira ka naman magkaano ng vice president, president ng, uh, ngayon lang Pero ako ngayon, ang sabi ko naman sa kanila, pati kay uh, President Arroyo, ma'am, spread natin lahat, respective of uh, the political color. Of the... Ayaw ko sa inyo, liberal yan, huwag yan. Gusto ko, sabi ko, pantay. Ratio and proportion. Ayaw ko. Isang beses lang ako dumaan dito, ayaw ko mag-iwan ng istorya na hindi maganda. E total, presidente na lang rin ako, di, lahat na. Sabi ko nga yung mga sundalo, nauna sila, maraming nainggit, pati maestra. Sabi ko sundalo, dublado ang sildo ninyo. Alam ko na yung pagdating ng Marawi, di, oh. Nandoon na yung sildo nila. We were uh, trying to save the money to double the salary. E tingnan mo naman kung after Marawi pa ako pumunta tapos sabihin ko na mag-increase kayo ng sildo. E di babarilin ako ng sundalo niyan. Kaya ako, I went there nine times. I never saw Trillanes na makipag uh, ano lang naman sa kapwa sundalo niya. Makapakaya. Mabuti pa si Secretary Rocky nagpunta doon naghabigay ng hamburger. Oh, distribute no. Pakita, basta pakita ng tao lang. Eh pakita ng tao lang naman talaga yan. kasi ano ano. Dala siya ng baril doon. Ako pumunta ako doon. Kinakausap ko yung mga tropa. At hindi ako nagpapalakas, no. Al ano mo bakit? May ko sa military. Hindi ako nagpapalakas sa inyo. Kasi hinalal ako ng presidente. Ngayon kayo may mandate kayo to protect the people and the preserve the nation. Gusto niyo ang sirain yan? Okay lang. Panahon ko, okay lang. Yung lahat na sundalo na hindi believe sa akin, edi doon kayo eh. Diyan, mag, 
mm, ano kayo sa luneta, mag, pagupit kayo lahat, papagong kayo. Mabuti. And that is a way of showing how you respect democracy. No. You, dis, you disagree, mm. you do it that way. Good. Mr. President, I remember during the campaign, meron kayong binanggit na you're for the amendment of the Constitution, whether by Constitutional Convention or Constituent Assembly, para ho naantala yata. Parang wala na narinig ang tao. Ano ba nangyayari dito? It's pending. Uh, itong, uh, uh, well, there's a time for everything. I've been going around. I suppose that you cannot convince everybody at one time that uh, federalism is for is good for the country. It might help. It cannot guarantee prosperity, kaagad. But it might help distribute the wealth of the nation amongst the local units who contribute to the national upkeep. Now, dalawang taon na po kayo at papunta na tayo sa pangatlong taon bilang Pangulo ng Bansa. Mari po bang ibahagi niyo sa amin kung meron kayong ano pang pagnanasa o desire o wish na makamit niyo upang maisagawa niyo ang lahat ng mga nasa sa isip niyo para sa interes ng bayan? Uh, three years left is uh, too short. Ngayon, ang gusto ko ngayon, kung yan na lang ang natira, ang naupinsa, naupinsahan, yun na lang ang tatapusin ko. And of course, itong discords of drugs. I promise the people talagang tatapusin ko yan. Tatapusin ko yan. Maniwala ka. Meron Tatapusan na, ko yan. Meron naman ho ba kayong regret during the three years na nandiyan kayo wala, na po? Wala. Wala. Uh, Congress has, uh, well, not all but uh, appropriately uh, extended the help. Mayroon silang mga views na nirespeto ko. Ayaw nila ibigay yung emergency powers. Gusto niya ayusin ang EDSA. Sabi ko, kung ang tingin niyo sa akin ka, huwag na lang. Ayaw ko na rin. Ayaw ko na rin. Uh, let it uh, be done by somebody else. Somebody else's term, not mine. Ginoong Pangulo, nasa inyo po pagkakataon na ihayag ang inyong pang mga huling damdamin at pananalita sa ating mga kababayan. Ito nga ngayon, uh, ito kay Trillanes. Uh, minto, nag, uh, medyo may gulo-gulo. Alam mo, si Trillanes lang naman, uh, diktador, wala man akong ginawa na nagpakulong ako ng tao. Matindi ako sa droga. You differentiate from a dictator yung absolute power at saka yung desire ko to protect your children and the country. Kaya sabi nila, diktador ako. Lahat naman niya, ang police naman ang inorderan kong gumawa. Ang sabi ko sa police, if your life is in danger or if you yourself, the police or the soldier, are in danger of losing your life in the fight against drugs, kill them. Huwag ikaw manghinayang ako. At kung ikaw ang magkakaso, sinabi ko, sagot ko kayo as long as it is in the performance of your duty. Pag nagkakaso kayo, sinabi ko, ako ang bahala. You will have, re you will have the same salary. I will see to it na kikita ka pa. May sildo ka. Naalala ko po tuloy. Naalala po tuloy, Mr. President, yung, yung son speech nyo nung nagdeklara kayo ng digmaan sa droga. I remember exactly what you said. Ang sabi nyo, those who will abuse their authority will have hell to pay because you are worse than criminality itself. Mm. Yun ang sabi ninyo. Mm. Lahat naman ng pulis na pabasok nung naabutan, patay man. Pediya, ganun rin. Hindi ko lang masabi dito kung sino. Pero malaman rin ninyo yan. Nung mga pideya na namatay, eh, sabi ko nga, kayo mauna yung putang ina kayo. Sabi ko, mauna kayo. Ngayon, kung kaya ninyo itong mga trabaho na ito at uh, ipagtanggol ninyo yung bayan, 
Okay, kayo sa mga sundalo ni Trillane, if you think that he is the bright, brightest uh, military man there about, sige, magsama-sama kayo. Go. I encourage you, go to him. Ngayon na. Huwag na ninyong hintayin pa buwan. Pakita na ninyo ngayon. At si Trillanes naman, dapat magpapagong rin. Kasi yung nagsimpatiya sa kanya, nagpapagong. Tignan natin kung gaano ka kintab yung mga ulo ninyo. Sir President, ano naman po ang mensahe niyo sa ating mga kababayan? Well, I said, I'm trying to govern the way I promised. Una, nakinig kayo na sa Pilipinas, in the presidential debates, I was the first to finish. Why? Because messaging lang ako. Every intermission, wala nga akong mga side propaganda. Sinabi ko sa inyo, I'll fight corruption. Ginagawa ko. Alam din nyo yan. The latest na tinanggal ko, general ng army. Tapos sabi ko, droga. Talagang wala akong pinatawa dito. Alam ninyo yan. Basta mag-abot tayo sa isang kanto, yun na yun. Tapos sinabi ko sa inyo, hindi ako makialam sa transaksyon sa gobyerno. Walang papel sa akin na transaksyon sa gobyerno dumadating dito sa Hanggang dyan lang yan sa cabinet member. It begins and ends with the cabinet member. Wala kang makitang firma at ayaw ko. Kasi nga, 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 nga nang, ay nanaw ko. Tapos sabi ko, I will talk to the enemies of the state para makatuan kay payapaan. Inumpisahan ko sa NPA, walang nangyari. Eh, pasensya. Eh, talagang hindi katanggap-tanggap yung mga proposal nila. Tapos uh, sa BBL, lum lumabas na. Si Normie Suarez, naghihintay lang mag-usap kami. O, tapos sabi ko ako, hanggang trabaho lang ako. Corruption, wala kayong masabi, baske ngayon. Na isang papel, na isang resibo, wala akong pinirma. Na hindi ako tumatanggap ng extra. Yung sweldo ko, diretso sa land bank. Diretso sa pamilya ko. Wala akong extra perks. Representation, ganun wala. Libre sa akin, bahay pati pagkain. Yun ang akin. Nagtatrabaho lang po ako. At yung five promises ko. Ginagawa ko, tinutupad ko talaga hanggang ngayon. Ano pa ang masabi ninyo sa akin? Nag-abuso ako kailan? Nagpatay ako ng tao. Marami, kriminal. Eh, lumaban eh. Ano nga lang yung polis ko, patay ng masundalo ko ang mamatay. Kung sabi mo, Takotin ninyo ako na makudita-kudita. Alam na ninyo sa kuman conference, sinabi ko na sa inyo. Hindi ako kailangan pilitin. Kung ayaw na ninyo, at tingin ninyo yung babae, si Lini, mas maganda, mas mahusay, eh di, tuloy ninyo eh. Sige. Hinahamon ko kayo. Talaga. Kasi sawa na ako yung takot-takot. Ayaw ko nang ganun. Gawin lang ninyo para matapos na. Talo-talo din. Talo, Tatalo na ko dyan sa Pasig River. Lalangoy ako roon. Pauwi. Kung sabihin mo, takot-takotin mo ako. I am not. Diba sinabi ko sa inyo, mga Pilipino, in this fight, itong lima, I'm willing to put at stake my life my honor and the presidency itself. Hindi ako na nagsasalita ng gano'n. Kaya takot-takotin ako pag-upit-pag-upit dyan, <clears throat> Mario Joseph. Umpisahan na ninyo ngayon na. 
Huwag na rin yung patagalin. Eh, yung plano ninyo magsabotage, gano'n, sa May, September 21, eh di gawain ninyo eh. Kaya eh, yung plano, sabi ng, ano na, yan, ang plano nila ngayon, kung hindi lang mandala sa paputok-paputok, uh, mag-assassinate. Uh, Kaligaya ko na lang mamatay sa kamay ninyo. <laughs> At least na hindi ba ano, mamatay sa sakit. Ano ba naman yung bala? Hindi ka umabot ng isang segundo yung tiis mo dyan. O magkundita, di magkundita kayo. With that parting statement, Mr. President, papasalamat po ako sa inyo sa pagkakataon na binigay niyo upang kayo makapanayam. At ang tawang bayan ay nagpapasalamat sa inyo rin sa pagbibigay daan ninyo rito upang makarating sa kanila ang inyong damdamin, mm. ang inyong mga hinaing kung meron man, at ang inyong pasasalamat sa kanila. Marami po salamat. Basta mag-concert ka lang palagi. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> salamat po, Mr. President.